So we are Yeti Pictures. I'm Tony Zagoreos and I'm Thanos Kagalos. We are a small motion design, a 3D animation studio based in Athens, Greece. Uh, we work with uh, the local market, of course, in Greece, agencies and productions. Uh, but we had the pleasure uh, to work with uh, many agencies and productions uh, around the world. Okay, so with uh, no further ado, we would like you to present our Sorial, okay? So today we're going to start um, and talk about how Cinema 4D is about us, the ultimate tool, how it helps a small studio like us uh, delivering in a short time work that uh, contains quality and uh, can deliver uh, a very nice uh, result to the client. And uh, then we're going to talk about two of our favorite personal projects. It's called Mad Scenes and the second one it's called uh, Fruitless. Okay. So let's start about talk about Cinema 4D and why we believe it's really, uh, let's say, the ultimate uh, weapon or tool for us. Because it's the only software that can adapt a uh, different variety of uh, plug-in scripts like, you know, smokes, uh, fires, uh, liquids, everything that can really push the, uh, the work of a studio into something that looks a little bit more heavy-oriented and VFX, okay? So... We will start and present you a few projects that really Cinema 4D with its own system like uh, Mod Dynamics uh, and everything else inside help us to move on, okay? So the first one is about uh, a Greek TV commercial. It's about snacks. they called Pita Takia. And uh, you will see the video and then we will discuss about how uh, cinema helped us a lot. Yeah, short video, it's about uh, 12 to 15 seconds. That took us about one week. Um, our main goal was to create a still life uh, art inspired video uh, that at the same time, you know, delivers the message of the client, but it has a magical touch. Okay, so here, uh, what uh, we did, as you see, is we used the MoGraph uh, dynamics and all the animation system inside Cinema 4D and then we combined X particles in order to make all the snacks that they are, you know, flowing, uh, floating around the packets and then getting inside and make them feel like it's magical, okay? This is the key word that we have from the client. And along with that, we used X particles to add, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, d uh, dust and atmosphere. So again, feels a little bit uh, more mystical and dreamy and atmosphere, okay? So very fast a result that in combination with the octane, uh, with the materials and the life that is being inspired, you know, by paint, by old paintings, really give us uh, a result that uh, the happy was client, and we also enjoy that a lot. So the next one is about uh, KitKat. Okay, KitKat. Um, I think it's about a few months ago they launched the new uh, flavor. It's the pink one. It's called KitKat Ruby. Uh, they sent us a ton of KitKat rubies, but uh, finally we were not able to, to eat them because... Nah, not, not very tasty. Not <laughs> very tasty, okay, from <laughs> at least from our side. So they're still in the, in the fridge in the office. Um, so let's see the video and discuss about, again, the, our workflow. 
Η KitKat ανακαλύπτει πρώτη ένα νέο κοσμογεύσης. Τη σοκολάτα ρουμπί. Μια απρόσμενη σοκολατένια εμπειρία. Νέα KitKat ρουμπί από το τέταρτο είδος ροζ σοκολάτας. We apologize about the Greek audio. <laughs> We were not able to, to remove that. So again, the, the technique is pretty similar on uh, the process that we follow. Thanos was doing the R&D on how we can break with the Voronoi fracture sphere. That was the big planet, you know, the pink planet. And then we used the real flow inside Cinema 4D. So as the sphere is being explode, we used uh, an animation of the real flow, so at the same time, we have that burst from the pieces uh, inside uh, the KitKat. And if I go one step back, what else we did is as these pieces were breaking and uh, the real flow was you know, exploding, we attached to all the fracture pieces from the sphere that you see, uh, X particles. So as the sphere was exploding, at the same time, all these small pieces, like debris, like uh, small dust, and all the, you know, let's say dust from the uh, sphere, was really making it uh, look more detailed and more tasty for the client. Okay, so again, the same technique. Okay, so that project and the the uh, snack that you saw before the Peter Taika took us about ten, or uh, a maximum of fifteen days. Okay, because they had to be fast. <coughs> So let's move on to the third one. Again, it's about food, it's about ice cream. Yes, we love uh, we food. We love food in Greece. Uh, I don't know if it's <laughs> <laughs> obvious. <laughs> obvious, but we're trying not to. So this is about um, Nestlé. They, they called us to create uh, the product shots about the ice creams, okay? Uh, so let's see the video and discuss about it again. Κάποιες φορές χρειάζεται να κάνεις ένα βήμα πίσω για να πας μπροστά. Νέο Nirvana Choco Almonds and Liqueur. Τραγανά κομμάτια αμυγδάλου με επικάλυψη απολαυστική σοκολάτας και μοναδικό λικέρ σοκολάτας σε πλούσιο παγωτό Nirvana. Okay, that's it. It's mainly product shots. So, again, it's the same theory that we use, you know? Uh, breaking pieces with Voronoi fracture about the almond, um, X particles in order to add more detail to the detailed pieces of the Voronoi fracture, and of course we use you know real flow that really makes it uh, look more you know uh, tasty and uh, look at more you know high production end. Uh, okay, it's really awesome again how Cinema 4D helps us. Okay. I, I c we can't imagine any other software that can blend all these, you know, liquids and particles and all these things, okay? The key words here as from the client should be tasty, should be very nice and well looking and you should achieve a photorealism, okay? So Thanos did all the texturing here uh, that should be very, very nice and then we added all the animations and the simulations with X particles and uh, MoGraph uh, dynamics, okay? We saw a few commercials, okay, that are related to more, let's say, hardcore TV commercials. But something else that we are doing in the office is we are doing a lot of style frames, okay, working with uh, clients abroad. Uh, we are working with uh, many studios, okay. That one was for Netflix show Patriot Act. We work with Slanted Studios, and this is a different. Uh, let's say uh, side of uh, our, our studio, okay? So why we love Cinema 4D? From the food commercials that you show, we are jumping into something different which is fully uh, design-wise oriented, okay? So you see here, you know, just a cloner with nice lighting, uh, a few VDB volumes, okay? Some mountains here with, uh, with lighting and texture and then adding design over and the same here for the same project, but with a different style, uh, different art direction. So it's, pr it's pretty nice how we can use the Cinema 4D in a way that is more design-wise. That one is for Netflix again. We cooperated with Kill Two Birds um, Studio from Los Angeles. And that was for Night Flyers for Netflix. Unfortunately, uh, second year didn't make it. Um, again, X particles inside Cinema 4D, very easily, very accessible, and with the lighting, you can get a really nice result. 
And just to remember, we have to do all of this in 24 hours, okay? Because this is how it works, okay? We must give to the studios uh, each day progress, okay? And as we're moving on, more style frames for more clients. The first one is um, the still life that uh, the Pete Attacker TVC was inspired to. And the second one is for another work again in the same style. And as we're moving forward, some more cinematic style frames, as you see here with the Cinema 4D, that we are trying to make them very fast, look really nice and uh, hello, sexy, I would say. Very yeah. sexy. Okay, <laughs> very sexy. Um, so they look cool, but uh, they are very, um, you know, accessible for us, okay? So, let's see our projects right now that we are going to break down. The first one, it's called Mad Scenes. We did that uh, one year ago, and it's a full surrealistic video, okay? So let's play the video, and Thanos will take over and start breaking down a few tips from that. Okay, Thanos is taking over right now for the for the tips. Thank you. So we're gonna break down the first scene of uh, Mad Scenes. It's the scene with the sea that you see here. Uh, it's a completely procedural setup uh, with no simulations and no keyframes whatsoever. So let's go to Cinema 4D and get started. As you see here, I have a Cinema 4D landscape and uh, a, a plane that uh, is supposedly to be the sea. So let me increase a bit my subdivisions here of the plane. And let's start by creating uh, the sea. I'm gonna use here a displacer deformer. Uh, and for those who are not familiar with Cinema 4D, displacer takes uh, an object's points or polygons and does what it's, it deforms them. Uh, so here I'm gonna go to shading. I'm gonna use a Cinema 4D noise. Cinema 4D has a great variety of noises, but the one I'm gonna use for this specific task is the electric. As you see here, I'm gonna add some animation speed. And something is starting to happen. Let's increase our scale a bit. And uh, let's say this is the very basic start for our C shot. Okay, so the tricky task was how to create uh, the waves here without any dynamics. I'm gonna start by using a new plugin by Merck Wilson, a very talented developer for Cinema 4D, and he made this, pl uh, this plugin called uh, Respline. So I'm gonna use the slice function, and the, the slice function, as you see here, uh, it takes uh, the current uh, geometry and finds uh, its segments along the y-axis at the moment. So I can reduce the splines, increase them. I'm gonna go to one and as you see I can offset the spline from the bottom to the top of the mountain and it's completely procedural. So let's stay somewhere about there. And I'm gonna make my mountain as an instance, so I see at the same time. Let me reduce my spline a bit, somewhere around there. Okay, this will be the starting point of my waves. I'm gonna make objects uh, flying out from the spline and interact with the plane object. I'm gonna take a matrix object. A matrix is uh, an empty cloner in Cinema 4D, it's just the data of uh, the cloner. Uh, and I'm gonna go to my matrix object, I'm gonna use it in object mode and I'm gonna drag my slice and as you see here I have those little points around, this is the matrix I'm gonna increase the count by a lot somewhere like this, let's say and I wanna make it grow all the time, I wanna make like waves do and grow all the time so I'm gonna go to my uh, matrix, I'm gonna add a plane effector uh, 
uh, and plane effector by default it gives me this y position so as you see here I don't want to move this on the y axis I'm gonna move it uh, let's say somewhere around here and a bit of something like this okay and now I, I have to make this loop all the time so, uh, so in order to start uh, resembling the wave since Cinema 4D R20 we have this new fall of tab with fields it's very very powerful and I'm gonna use here a freeze field and freeze takes the current state of the matrix and stores it and that's that's the basic function of it and I'm gonna go to my remapping I'm gonna enable remapping inside the freeze field I'm gonna go to contour I'm gonna use my curve mode and here as you see I have some animation speed increasing that animation speed and pressing play and I start having a, a movement of those matrices I'm gonna make my spline uh, linear this means the animation is always linear coming uh, uh, like this so how are we gonna make those uh, objects react with my bottom object I'm gonna use a second displacer I'm gonna use... Uh, okay I'm gonna call the first one C and I'm gonna call this second one waves and I'm gonna drop it as a child of my C object and nothing happens yet but if I drag the matrix in the fall of tab of my uh, wave displacer I'm gonna use it as a point object again nothing happens yet because I haven't set a value for the displacer so if I go here and I set a color we start having something it's, it's the beginning of something I'm driving displacement via the matrices okay so let's make this a bit more interesting uh, if I go here uh, to my uh, matrix object uh, to, to the follow field of the displacer I'm gonna go and I'm gonna use a new field it's called delay it's the same as the delay effector for those who are familiar in Cinema 4D uh, and I'm gonna use it in spring mode to make it as you see the second lines of the wave driving around and uh, I'm gonna use on top of that a decay effector decay does what it says let me increase that to see it leaves a nice trail behind or no trail at all so I'm gonna leave it to the default values and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a bit more interesting uh, I think it, it we can push it a bit further so I'm gonna take my matrix object and I'm gonna use a random effector uh, random effector takes the position of the matrices by default and randomizes them so in the random effector tab I don't want any movement on the Y axis I want them to go along the C so I'm making the Y zero and I'm gonna go to my effector tab and instead of random I'm gonna use a noise so as you see this makes it a lot more interesting and uh, fluidy like and I can increase my animation speed I can let me reopen my C waves uh, let me decrease a bit the actual C yeah so we have something that is completely procedural so far we have zero keyframes uh, zero uh, uh, modeling and why is the risk line plugin important because as you see now if I grab my mountain and uh, let's say I'm gonna change the seed I'm gonna make it something different the risk line plugin you see here it adapts uh, procedurally to the to the edges of the mountain so no matter the shape I don't have to make all this process again I just uh, everything works just out of the box okay so what else is important in this setup uh, let me hide the matrix from our viewport uh, let's say because of the way this is set up we can also completely uh, offset uh, the matrix let's say I want waves only from this side I don't want from the other side just make it go this way or I'm gonna make it you know this way it's it's very very powerful because like this I can I can art direct uh, with many objects uh, interacting with the C procedurally without any hassle at all uh, what is the next step let's see how we are gonna make some foam on these waves I'm gonna take my C object uh, let me increase my point count let's say to 200 
so it's a bit more detailed. And I'm gonna make my C object editable. So now I have access to my points, okay? And I'm gonna use a, a, a tag called tension, uh, which is used in characters to make uh, morphs between states, like the arm that it's bending, and it creates some maps here, some interesting folds. So if I go to my first frame, I press fix tension, and then I go and check uh, in stretch map and I say make map. So it gives me a vertex map. And now as you see, I can have uh, vertices colored uh, as they stretch up or, or uh, less or more. Let me lock this. I'm gonna go here. Uh, sorry. And uh, as you see, I can reduce it, or make it m more subtle or more as I want it. Let's leave it, let's say, somewhere around there. And uh, now I'm going to use this information to drive a shader to, cre to, to create uh, the foam. This is applicable to any render engine. I'm going to use here Cinemas 4D default uh, 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 render engine. So I'm going to Effects. I'm adding a vertex map in my color channel. And inside the vertex map, I am dragging the map I just created. And as you see, I have a black and a white map, which I can uh, colorize on top of it. So I'm going to use uh, the colorizer. And as you see, this looks like a lava, I think. But uh, let's make it more like a sea with waves. So... Yeah, and I can still go into my tension tag. I can make it more or less. And uh, as you see, this is a very interesting setup because I I, I, I only did uh, the C editable once and nothing more. Let's move to the next uh, tip of the presentation, which is this uh, crowd orientation. You see this crowd cheering around the toaster. Uh, it's also pretty basic, so I'm going back to Cinema 4D. Let me close that one. And let me go right here. And Tony, my friend, will take over to demonstrate Sorry, that. Sorry, Thanos has to help me with the microphone. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to show you a little bit uh, how we can play with the crowd, how you can add direct the crowd. So you saw in the video, excuse me, that uh, we had um, the car toast in the center. Right now we have our logo, our Yeti logo. So we have our guy here, okay? So if I press play, yeah, he's cheering. Uh, basically we used Mixamo for that one. Uh, we texture the guy and that's it, you know? You, we, we prefer Alembic, okay? Because we have, uh, it's, it's a little bit faster and we have some uh, uh, control here. So what I will do is, I will go here, I will use a cloner, I will drop my guy here, okay? So right now the mode in the cloner is uh, moved to linear. I will use Hone Compare, okay? And by Hone Compare, uh, we will explain you why we're doing that, okay? I will change the orientation, okay? Right now, if I go closer to them, you see there are 10 and 10, then the speed is cool. But if I go and increase like uh, 40 and 40, you will see that, yeah, the speed is very, very slow. So what I can do in order to, to fix that, I can go to instance mode and change that to render instance. So immediately they have their original speed, okay? And what I can do else to make, give a little bit of uh, variety is uh, I can go to here, duplicate that and go to offset in the second and labing and press five okay i can go there duplicate that again and have an offset about 10 okay so we have a crowd that is you know moving uh, fast uh it has some variety uh, but what we can do in order to are directed okay i will go to the top view okay get a little bit out sorry uh, i will use my sorry i will use my pen tool okay okay so I'm using a 
drawing a circle, okay? And it's a bit uh, sloppy right now, so what I can do is I can go to X and I can use uh, what it's called spline smooth. And I can I can go and spline a little bit. Stop stop press stop. So okay, it's working. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. So the spline smooth tool uh, smoothens the spline if you have a very jagged spline and very rough. Uh, you can smooth it out with that tool, it's very, very useful. Okay, and I will name that, uh, I will keep that, and name that, uh, you know, control crowd. Okay, so again, my perspective view, I will go here, and why we use honeycomb arrays? Because if I go here into cloner, and go here to morph and spline, I can draw on my control crowd, okay? And here, what we see, it's really, it, uh, it's like uh, oriented, it's limiting where the crowd should be, okay? Uh, and if I go here to set side width and play again with side height, okay? I can control inside my control uh, spline. And if I go here and use it in my points mode and start selecting a point and move it here, and uh, take another one, move it here, it's like I have completely control on where my crowd is going, you know, is going to be, okay? So, let's uh, go here. Yeah, okay, let's say we stop here, okay? Um, so, right now we see all that people, okay, they're pretty similar. What else I can do is I can open a few more guys that we have, okay? And uh, I will take them, three of them. I'm going here, cloner, drop them inside, okay? So we have a, a bunch of people happening, but in order to make them look more, you know, not using the clone irritate, I will use a clone random, okay? So they feel a little bit more, you know, random. And right now what else I can do is I'm going and searching about the uh, random, excuse me, random effector, okay? And dropping the random effector in the cloner, let's see that is on site, okay? Use a random effector, I will delete the position, I will go scale, absolute scale, and <laughs> make them a little bit bigger, okay? So we have a nice crowd happening. But you see, there's a problem because some of them, they are, you know, heading towards. So what I can do in order to, to fix that, I can go here into the effector, go to minimum and max, and I will change the minimum to zero. So right now, Everyone else is, you know, around the logo, everything is cool, we have a randomness. But what happens is that no one is uh, looking at the logo. Now they're looking in different directions. So what I can do is I can go again and shirts and I will use my target effector. Okay. Go in the cloner. Let's drop the dra target effector here. And right now, no, they are pointing and all the crowd is looking into a different direction, okay? So what I have to do is I'm going to target and I'm going to reverse heading, okay? So from the moment I reverse the heading, we see that everyone is looking at the logo, okay? So wherever the target is, I can move it and make people watching hmm. uh, where, the, where the logo is. Very and nice. And last one, let's make it look, let's go to more. Yeah, as you see, because Alembics are uh, with no keyframes, uh, we, we can render instance them and you can have a lot of crowd uh, very, very efficiently and very fast without bogging down your viewport. Yeah, and you can find a really nice angle and you can use it in any way you like. So with a spline and using Honeycomb Array, you're able to control the crowd in a really nice way, give some uh, variation and randomness, and yeah, there it is. Is there something that I forgot? That I one? think we can move on to okay, the next one. Okay, that's the one, sorter, and uh, we should move, sorry, let's stop it. We should move to the next one, project, it's called Fruitless. It's again uh, a personal project that we finished like two months ago, and um, let's see that, okay? And we will discuss about a few tips again.
it's uh <coughs> it was a bit weird yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like we we used any kind of uh, techniques we know like like particles real flow what else uh, uh, turbulence, ter turbulence of D, of D, you know everything. dynamics cloth everything <laughs> we, we did a lot of scenes and a lot of tests and uh, we decided at the end oh why don't we make a project out of it yeah we m i think <laughs> there were about 145 scenes okay but we <laughs> you know but cut a lot of them we had to stop at some point yeah. and say let's let's edit them and make a project out of it okay we will see right now a similar effect like that we used a lot of in the project fields and all this stuff so we will see that uh, effect right now okay um so we have to jump inside cinema 4d again and uh, let's start with uh, with a banana so we're having our banana here okay and uh, right now it's it, it's a banana it's, it's nothing funch okay so what i'm going to do right now as a first step is i'm going to banana i'm going to simulation tags i'm going to use the the cloth okay and if i press play what happens is that the cloth is just falling okay it's nothing funch right now so i'm going to force it I'm going to play at zero for the gravity. I'm going to use drag number two. And if I go to the tag here, what I'm doing, the only thing that I'm doing is I'm going to size and play something like 150, okay? So, and what I have instantly is that one, okay? First, like, you know, uh, really nice effect. And if I open the banana subdivision surface here, it's starting to get a little bit more, more detailed, okay? So this is the first step in order to move and make something, you know, uh, more advanced. So the second step is um, I will have to create a cube, okay? It doesn't matter uh, how big it is, okay? Or where it is. Or where it is. Uh, but in order to see the, the points here, excuse me, in order to see the points here, I will drag it up, okay? I will make it editable. It's pretty... Um, critical to make it editable I will go to the banana again simulation tags and right now I will use the cloth build okay so using the cloth build I will drop the cube that I just created in the belt and I press set okay and right now because I have uh, everything here with the points basically it connects all the points from the banana to the points of the cube okay so right now I don't need the cube so I will hide that Okay, and I would go to the cloth belt and I will remove draw, okay, because um, I don't want to see that, okay. So we have a basic setup with cloth and the cloth belt right now, uh, but let's move forward, okay, go to the points, okay, everything is selected and I will press here in order to create a, ver a vertex map, okay. I will press OK, okay, so right now nothing happens. So moving forward, as you know in R20 we're using fields. I will use fields here and I have freeze, okay? Freeze it's like, you know, storing uh, the current data of the object, okay? I will go here to the mode and I will use grow, okay? Right now if I press play, nothing happens. Um, so in order to make that work, I should go to the linear field, I should use a spherical field here, okay? I will take it. make it smaller and I will go about to the to the top there okay a little bit closer yeah something around here so now if I press play it starts growing okay yeah it's it's cool but it's not very interesting especially here at the edges so firstly about um, the freeze to s something very similar is if I change the uh, radius okay and if I change the effect strength okay uh, it really changes the way it's growing here, okay? So radius is how many polygons. So if I go lower, if I go to four in the radius, you see, you know, it's slower and it reads differently. So I will stop about 12%, um, okay, here. And right now I go to my spherical field and I will use something that it's called, you know, to uh, the freeze. Subfields, okay? So I will go to the radius going down and I will use what it's called the random field, okay? Let's go down and I will use a random noise, 
Okay. So that will make it a little uh, bit more. Put it on noise. It's sorted right now. Sorry. I oh, sorted. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, change the noise. Yeah. So s you see, it's starting to be a little bit more uh, interesting again. So I can play here with the scale. Let's go something higher. Yeah. So it starts to be different, but I will stay about 120. About that one. Okay, here. So let's go. It plays. Yeah, it's uh, very organic. Yeah. Uh, much control in the way you distribute the vertex map. If if you put the spherical field on the other side of the banana, uh, the vertex map starts growing from the other side. So yeah. Exactly. So we're moving on. Now we're going to connect these two setups. Okay. So I'm going to the influence of the belt uh, tag. And I'm going to drop my vertex map that we just created. And if I press play, you see it's starting to have an effect. But the problem here is that the effect that the effect is starting to be like inversed. Okay. So what we should do right now is we should go here. I, I should, you know, uh, select these two. And I must create uh, a new group field. Okay. So these are together. And in order to invert it, that should go here, invert. And right now, hopefully, yeah. And right now, this is the uh, right sequence for, for the project, uh, excuse me, for the animation, OK? So it starts to be more uh, accurate in the way that we want it, OK? So let's see that here, OK? Something else that we can do is I can go to the X, bring an attractor. Place the attractor in the uh, in the center. And now, right now, it's not cool at all. Okay, and this happens because I have to go to the attractor and give a negative uh, value. Okay, let's let's go minus ten. So it doesn't attract; it repels. Now the object towards outside. It's like pumping it up. Okay, so it's starting to be more more interesting. Okay, so. Yeah, it's cool. Something else that we can do, okay? Uh, let's uh, bring on the cloth surface, okay? And let's bring it here. Let's attach the banana to the cloth surface. Let's move to the cloth tag here and enable tier, okay? And if we enable tier, we have to lower down the size, okay? So let's go about 50, okay? And let's see what is the result, okay? And now the result is something, again, very interesting, but in a different way. And you can have different results. So this is one here. If I go to size, let's go at something, I don't know, 70. Yeah. yeah. You have way more different uh, behavior of, of, of the cloth, okay? Which is, again, very, very interesting. And yeah, and if I open the subdivision surface, yeah, you're getting more de uh, detailed, okay? And uh, the last one, I will get subdivision surface on. The last thing that you can do is about, you know, texturing, okay? So oh, I think we have already one, but I will drop that one, okay? So I have that banana here, okay? It's white. But what I can do is open it here. I can go to the color, texture, effects, vertex map, going to my vertex map and dropping inside the vertex map, okay? I would remove right now the tier so it's very... Uh, it's more distinct. Yeah, exactly. It's more distinct, okay? And I will size. change the size again, like, let's go 150, okay? And you see along with the animation, we also have a really nice uh, color movement. And the last one is if you go to the texture along with the vertex map, you can go here. You can add the colorizer, okay? And if I play now, yeah, it's like a fire. And if I go to gradient right now, here, I can load preset and you can you know, choose anything from us. What do you want? You want uh, that one? Uh, that one looks cool. You like that? Okay. More, more graph okay, oriented. Okay, okay. <laughs> and that one, okay. 
So you're able to add, you know, any color palette that you want, anything else that you want, and you have a total control for the banana uh, effect that we just presented, okay? Straightforward and uh, really nice effect, okay? Yeah? So let's move forward with Thanos about uh, the next one. It's about hanging spoons and ropes. Again, this is a little bit more advanced, so Thanos will take over. I'm the advanced guy. Yeah, you are the, you are the geek. <laughs> uh, welcome. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So, a uh, problem uh, we faced uh, many times is that I couldn't make uh, some objects... Uh, what's it? Some objects uh, hanging and actually drive the spline dynamics. Uh, so let me show you without any delay how I solved this problem here. Uh, where is it? So my first approach is I'm going to solve this very quick with some light bulbs that I have here straight from the content browser. Uh, I'm going to use the hair module uh, to create some splines and, the sp and, and make them as uh, uh, cords of the, of the lights. So I have this plane. I'm going to put it a bit higher let's say higher and I'm gonna use uh, hair Cinema 4D hair is a very very powerful tool and it's not all only used for characters uh, you can use it along with MoGraph and that gives us a lot of opportunities so let me reduce a bit the hair count hair by default as you see have some gravity and stuff let me turn around the plane you see this is the start of the hair and uh, let's set up some things also let's go to hair we go to roots we say uh, as guides which means that now that the hair are exactly as my guides and if I go to my edit to my generate and instead of none I change it to spline now I can have access to these uh, points okay so let me grab a cloner object let me drag uh, the light bulbs as children of the cloner object and uh, I'm gonna use it in object mode this means I'm gonna distribute somewhere and I pick my hair as a distribution target so right now you see I have this cluttered effect but if I reduce my count to one and if I remove loop and take the start point I'm just dragging this all down to the tip if I go also to my transform tab and I think this is yeah this is the correct axis what we have now is uh, this very interesting and very procedural again setup uh, uh, with uh, spline dynamics let me also add some sorry some turbulence here uh, what turbulence does is what it says it adds a bit of you know wind force and all is cool and dandy but as you see our objects are intersecting uh, and it's, it's 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 actually fake it's very nice but it's fake they, they don't have a, they don't give weight to the splines so let's let's explore another technique uh, here I have my scene open I have a simple clone in in linear mode and I have some cubes uh, and from I want to connect these cubes and make them dynamic, okay? So I'm going to go to my plugins. Cineversity guys have made this very, very powerful plugin called CV Dynamic Connector Object. And if I just drag my cloner as a child of the, of the CV Dynamic Object, if I press play now, all the cubes fall because instantly they are dynamic. But if I go and say anchor start and anchor end, it means that the first and the last cube are being attached, hold to the world. And if I create connector, you see all those uh, shapes. It's, it's a connector object of Cinema 4D that connects every cube together. So now if I press play, I start having something like this, which is exactly what I want because it's driven by the actual weight of the clones. And this is uh, completely procedural, as you see, without any changes and without adding any manual work, I can add more or less uh, cubes, okay? So the next step I would do is I'm gonna get a torus object. I'm gonna put it like this. I'm gonna scale it down. 
let's say somewhere around there. Uh, and I'm gonna make it react with the cubes, okay? So I'm gonna add a rigid body tag to my torus. I'm gonna go to my uh, collision and instead of shape automatic, I'm gonna use a moving mesh. Otherwise it doesn't recognize the hole in the middle of the torus. And if I press play now, as you see, the torus actually has an effect and, uh, uh, and weight on the spline. Let's see that a bit more clear, clear. Let's go to the mass, and if I change it to custom density, and if I use like a ridiculous high number, you see, the, the tube is dragging so much down uh, the, the cubes that it's breaking, okay? So this means this is working. Let me reset that to wall density. And let me very quick make a cylinder. I'm uh, using it as a child of the torus. I'm resetting the PSR, which means it's resetting its uh, coordinates. I'm gonna put the, th the, the cylinder right there. And I'm gonna use now uh, a connector manually between those two objects. Um, so here's my connector. I'm placing it uh, in between those just for visual purposes. And what connector does, it connects the object A, the torus, with the cylinder, the object B. And uh, as you see now, the connector is right there. But if I make it a child and reset PSR of my torus, now these two objects are connected. So all I need to do is go to my cylinder. I'm going to add the rigid body tag. And uh, yes, we start in getting something that is very similar to what I did in the previous uh, example. And if I make this a group, uh, let me add a few copies here and there, uh, and press play. Yeah, you see they are doing some weird stuff, but we can fix that very easily. We go to my project settings, to dynamics, expert, and I'm gonna increase my steps per frame, which increases the accuracy of the rigid body objects. And now you see, Everything is working as should. I can even drag some turbulence in there. Oh, let me increase that. You see? They actually drive the spline by adding weight to it. And uh, how you would make that spline? Uh, it's pretty easy. You just take a cube, uh, uh, sorry, the cylinder and the torus. And I'm going to use a tracer object. I'm going to connect all objects. And uh, let's see. Yeah. We start having splines, and you can make the spline dynamic as well, etc., etc., and you can achieve the look uh, that you're after. So, uh, I think that was it for today. Yeah. Uh, this is our socials. Yeah, these are socials, this is our website, this is our Facebook, and you can find us here, you know. Anything you would like to ask or, uh, you know, send us an email, everything, we are... And we will be also behind. Uh, yeah, we will also be here, so anything you would like to ask or discuss, we are, we are free to do that. So, we will... Thank you very much. Thanks, and, Maxon. Um, thanks, Maxon, and everyone from the internet. Thank you, Thank guys. you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>